Yeah. Uh, the main point, as you might have realized already, is that the star is a system in equilibrium. Two forces are balancing each other. One force is, of course, the gravitational attraction, which makes the star contract as much as possible, because the gravitation is an attractive force. But to balance this, we have the thermal pressure, because the material inside is hot. The, any hot object, the molecules are moving around very fast, and therefore it produces pressure. And this pressure balances the gravitational attraction. And a star is in equilibrium under the competing forces, the gravitational attraction and the outside moving pressure. Now, as we've already seen, the temperature is produced by nuclear reactions. So the nuclear reaction is absolutely essential to balance the gravitational force. Now, once all the hydrogen combines to form helium, then you don't have any fuel left for continuing with the hydrogen-helium reaction. Of course, other reactions are possible. We'll come to that later. But supposing there were no other reactions that were possible, once all the hydrogen combines into helium, the star has finished its fuel. The petrol is over or the gas is over. So what happens to it then? Now, for sun, as I told you, this will happen after 10 billion years. So when this will happen depends on the mass of the star. As I told you earlier, for the sun, we expect it to be 10 billion years. But if the sun was about 10 times more, it would have been 100 times less. So you can see that the life in the universe has been possible because everything is sort of right. The mass of the sun was just what it is now, and it is going to last for 10 billion years. So the star, which is in a balance between the gravitational force and the thermal pressure, will lose its balance once the nuclear fuel is finished. Next slide. When fuel is finished, then what happens? Then, since hydrogen at the core of the star has been converted into helium, whereas in the surface layers, hydrogen is still present, the fusion process moves over into the surface. So it makes a burning shell inside the sun, and this shell expands. So the sun becomes very much larger in size, and we say that it will become a red giant. That is, it will look very large, and the burning shell of uh, uh, hydrogen being converted into helium will give it the color red, and so it will be a red giant. And so the next stage in the life of the sun will be a red giant. After this, what happens? After this, the helium will try to get itself converted into other heavier things, like helium can combine to give you carbon. Three heliums can give you to combine carbon, or it can even, four can combine to give you oxygen. So this process goes on. But suppose that process is also over. In that case, for a star with the mass of a sun, other nuclear reactions are usually not possible. So after that, the star cools down and becomes what we call a white dwarf. Now, as I mentioned earlier briefly, it was proved by Professor Chandrasekhar that the white dwarf really cannot have a mass greater than 1.5 times the mass of the sun. Why is it so? To understand this, we must know how does the white dwarf maintain balance. Because in the white dwarf, there is no nuclear reaction. So there is no thermal pressure. So what is it that produces the pressure for the white dwarf to balance the gravitational attraction? 